Hi, I'm Michael with LandElevated.com, and in this blog and video, we're going to be talking about planning your development. Now, planning a development is probably my favorite part of the whole process. This is where you get a chance to be creative and design exactly what you want down to the very last detail. From the location of the driveway to the floor plan of the house, even the landscaping to make sure that you've got your trees planted in the perfect spot to provide you some shade and also protect your views. This is your opportunity to be a visionary and create your dream. So have fun with it and don't hold back. So let's take a deeper look in some of these bigger items that you should consider in this planning phase. One is the different types of structures. Now, the best place to start in the planning phase is to determine what you actually want to build. And in an earlier chapter, we talk about starting with the end in mind and determining what you really want to do with your land. And the type of structure that you decide to develop will have the largest impact on how you proceed. Whether it's a log cabin, a tree house, a tiny home, a yurt, a single family home, your options are almost endless. And there's new concepts coming out every day with more and more affordable options to choose from. So below, let's take a look at some of the most common types of structures being built today and which one might be best for you. Now, a single family home or an SFR, single family residence, is the most common type of home in the US. And a single family home can be built out of a number of different types of materials and methods, but there are a few things to consider when evaluating if a single family home is really what you're looking for. First, there are several different foundation types. The three most common types are a slab, a crawl space, and a basement. Now, a slab foundation is literally a slab of concrete at grade level, and it's usually the most affordable type of foundation. Now, a crawl space foundation does not have a full basement. It can cost a little bit more in the short term than a slab on grade foundation, and it can also be more conducive to certain climates and prevent cracking and costly repairs, again, due to your climate and how expansive the soils are. The last, a basement foundation, it's usually the most expensive type of foundation, but it does provide an opportunity to give you more livable square footage. It's usually cooler down in the basement. You can get some storage and other flexibility with your space. So outside of the foundation, there's really endless options in what you can do. Now, most homes are stick built, meaning they're built out of wood. Um, at least the framing is. Uh, so if they're less than four stories, then most single family homes out there are built out of wood. Now you might see some single family homes that are built out of concrete or steel, and there's some other alternative materials like there's sod homes. I mean, sod homes were what the settlers used hundreds of years ago. Um, there's homes built out of plastic. There's homes built out of aluminum. There's all different types of single family homes out there. But the key differentiator is, is that a single family home is built on site and they're always attached to a permanent foundation. So they're not assembled anywhere else and then transported to the property. They are built on site and they're attached to a permanent foundation, which is either a slab on grade, uh, a crawl space or a basement foundation system. Now the second type of home is a modular home. Now a modular home is constructed off site and then it's later assembled or put together on the property. Now it's important to note that modular homes are different than manufactured homes because by definition they are fixed to a permanent foundation. Modular homes are usually built in factory or in a factory like setting with each component installed prior to delivery and that includes the plumbing, electrical, all of your gas lines, everything is basically installed off-site so that once it's assembled on site, they connect everything and it's ready to go. Once the home's ready to be installed, it's often moved in sections or modules and the final assembly takes place on the property. Now because modular homes are built in a factory-like setting, they can be completed in significantly less time with arguably higher quality because they're in a controlled environment and they are often required to meet even more strict codes and regulations than a traditional single family home. Now, the next type is a manufactured home or a mobile home. 
Now, a manufactured home, it's also commonly referred to as a mobile home. Both are constructed off-site and they're transported to the property for installation. However, by definition, a manufactured or mobile home are not permanently affixed to the foundation and they are transported on a wheeled chassis. So you may see a lot of mobile homes or manufactured homes that have this skirting around the bottom of the property um, and that's to cover up the wheels, the wheeled chassis. And at any point in time, you could technically hook up that home to a, tri to a truck and drive it right off of the site. Next, let's talk about tiny homes. Now, tiny homes have kind of been a craze as of lately. Um, there have been a lot of really cool concepts that have come out. There's really no official definition or uh, widely accepted definition of a tiny home, but they are commonly referred to as being smaller home, less than 600 square feet. They're built off site and they are usually built on a wheeled chassis or a trailer so that they can be transported to the property. Now, tiny homes can be attached to a permanent foundation and most municipalities still view tiny homes in the same category as a manufactured or a mobile home. Uh, and they're treated as such in their code. So they're gonna, if they're being built, they're gonna make sure that they are built to those same specifications that they require a manufactured or a mobile home. A lot of municipalities and counties will require that they are affixed to a permanent foundation and that they obviously have their wastewater treatment uh, system installed prior. Okay. All right. So next let's jump into the design process. So the design process is where your creative vision really meets reality. Unfortunately, our wish list of what we want isn't always feasible, whether it be financially restrictive or otherwise. And a lot of those items we discover in the design process. Now there are a lot of professionals that you can engage to help you with this process, including land planners, landscape architects, architects, engineers, contractors, and builders. So let's take a quick look at each one of those um, and show you what they do. So land planners are able to take your completed survey, which shows the boundaries of the property, and they design the overall plan for the property. Now they will go in and they'll evaluate the zoning code, they'll incorporate all of the setback requirements, any other restrictions uh, to show you your potential building envelope, your landscaping requirements or anything else that you need to incorporate in your overall land plan. Now if you don't want to use a professional land planner, that's totally fine. You could just as easily take the survey, sketch out exactly what you want to do with the property. Land planners usually have uh, a computer software system that they'll use, it's CAD. Um, they'll be able to, to sketch it out to scale on the property and it's much easier to move things around and shift things around, but they're not necessary. If, if you wanna just sketch it out on a sheet of paper, uh, you can just as easily do it to scale and then move things around as you uh, further develop your land plan. Now, once you take your land plan to the building department, the building department is going to confirm that it meets all the requirements and restrictions. They'll let you know any changes that are needed. Your land plan should include everything that you want to put on the property. And that includes your house, sheds, outbuildings, your well, your sewer septic system, your driveways, fences, trees, other landscaping, everything. Put as much detail into your land plan as possible. Now, landscape architects. Landscape architects are not to be confused with architects, although many architects do provide landscape architecture in their scope of services. Landscape architects specialize in everything outside of the structure in your land plan. They work with your land planner if they didn't develop the land plan themselves, and they design the landscaping for the entire property. Now, while they help with selecting the trees and foliage, and other general, general landscaping for the property, they can also help with some more complicated items, including your roads, driveway, walkway, drainage, detention, retaining walls, anything else that has a little bit more complexity to it. Architects. So most people are familiar with architects. They are licensed professionals. They help design, plan, and develop a structure that you're intending to build. 
Architects usually go through extensive training and education to ensure that uh, they know the code and then they design your structure to meet those code requirements and include any other necessary components like your electrical and plumbing fixtures, hot water heater, furnace, just to name a few. They help translate your vision into what you actually want to build. And they also ensure that that vision meets all of the zoning and building code requirements. So they'll develop a complete set of architectural plans and those plans are submitted to the building department. Those are reviewed and approved to make sure that they meet all of the specific code requirements. Next are engineers. So there are a couple of different types of engineers out there, but when you build a home, usually you'll be working with a structural engineer to ensure the property meets all the structural requirements. Structural engineers and architects really work hand in hand to ensure the plans being drawn will meet all the structural requirements, load bearing requirements, etc. Structural engineers also will work with the contractor during the build, offering advice and technical aspects of the building. And uh, note that if your structure, your building is not very complex, you might not need a structural engineer or their involvement may be very limited. There are a lot of architects who will seek advice or guidance from a structural engineer, get them to sign off on the structure and the plans, and then um, they can basically handle through the build process. Last, uh, we'll talk about contractors and builders. So the role of a contractor or builder is obviously gonna be defined in your agreement with them, but they can handle the entire build from start to finish or you can engage them just to handle specific parts or components of the build. Now, usually they provide all the materials, labor, equipment, consultative services, anything else that is needed to build out the entire project. Contractors will usually hire specialized trades for each specific component of the work being completed, like a plumber, an electrician, a framer, etc. General contractors should be licensed in most states and they should be able to take plans that are created by your architect, interpret those plans and deliver the final product. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about contractors in a later blogging video, so be sure to check that one out. Last thing that we'll talk about is the planning department. Now, every county and municipality is different, but permits and plans are usually approved by the planning department. The planning department establishes the guidelines and regulations for all buildings within the city or, co or the county. They also establish a strategic plan for growth and development in the area. And this includes developing and, and adopting the zoning code and the building requirements. So we highly, highly recommend taking the time to become familiar with your zoning code and your planning department so that you understand exactly what you can and cannot do with the property. Most officials within the planning department are very receptive and open uh, to meeting with you. They're happy to discuss your plans in detail. Make sure that you're doing everything uh, that you need to do and following a, a process in order to get the plans approved. So uh, this has been a, a video on planning your development. Definitely reach out to us if you have any other questions. And thanks for watching.